Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Trinity College Football Coaches Show. Joined again by head coach Jeff Devaney, I'm Harry Hawkins, as we look past to week one, where the Trinity Bantams defeated the Bates Bobcats 28-17, and ahead to week two, where Trinity faces Williams in another match in a tremendous NESCAC football rivalry. Coach, looking back at week one, just your general impressions of the team, sort of a slow start, but really came on strong at the end with 14 unanswered points to win the game. Yeah, I was really proud of the way the team uh, responded. I think we got off to a slow start. Uh, some of that can be attributed to first game jitters, uh, playing some young guys, but you have to give a lot of credit to Bates as well. I mean, they had a really good plan. They're a very well coached football team, and uh, they did some things that we hadn't seen them do in the past, and we had to make some adjustments to that. And um, But I just thought the way our guys responded, especially halfway through the third quarter, we're down 17-14 and Bates is driving, they're inside our 20 and our defense made a big stop on fourth down and then our offense kind of got things going from there. Uh, defensively, one of the things that we tried to do against Bates, they're a triple option team and we wanted to give their quarterback who was starting his first game some different looks. So sometimes we were bringing guys hard off the edge at him, sometimes we were sitting and not coming hard, sometimes we are bringing our ends inside so that he would try to keep the ball. And we were just trying to give him some different looks uh, and ho hopefully making him make a mistake every once in a while. So right here you see uh, senior Mike Weatherby, you know, acting as if he's coming up the field, but he's really just sitting on this play, which gives him the ability to come back on the dive. And uh, 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 away from him, we're bringing this end inside to try to pinch the dive. Preston Kelly, who was our defensive player of the game here, our sophomore DN from California, just did a really good job of executing what we were asking them to do in this game. Okay. Again, defensively, trying to give another look here. The, the clips I showed you before, we were kind of sitting and being passive. This was one of those calls where we weren't going to be passive. We brought both linebackers inside to try to make the quarterback keep the ball and not give the dive off. At the same time, we blitzed our end at the quarterback to try to get him to make a quick decision. Now, I'll give him credit. Sometimes he made some really good decisions and hurt us. Uh, but in this particular play, we were able to get him. Okay, same thing here. Again, we're running this, the blitz with the pressure up the middle. And this time, he did give the ball right into the pressure. Uh, again, we're, we're trying to just give him, like I said, some different looks and hope that he didn't make the right decision every time. And right here, uh, we were able to to get him to hand the ball right up into Tom Haverty, played a good game for us at Mike Linebacker. This was a big play for us here. Brian Dona is our junior corner up top. You know, it's one of those games where you talk to the corners about not getting bored uh, because I think they threw the ball five times in the first three quarters. A lot of option. And Brian stayed focused, and when we got an opportunity here on the third and six, he jumped the slant route and intercepted the ball. This is at a point in the game where we had just taken the lead. Uh, and this interception set up our next score to get us up two scores. So big play by Brian. Similar type play here, just from a different angle. This is Evan Bunker scored three touchdowns on the day, and this is one of them with Ben Crick as his lead back. Actually, this play is blocked so well from Matt Porter and Jake Golden that Ben Crick doesn't have to block anybody. Uh, and Evan's able, able to take it in the end zone. This touchdown put us up two scores here. Again, another look at the defense here. You can see that we're pinching on this play, pinching the end, trying to make the quarterback keep the ball and play the linebacker over the top. And we were hoping to get a few of these in the first game with the option by giving them some different looks, and we were able to get a fumble here. We did recover three fumbles on the day, which, which did make a difference for us. Mike Mancini, who had 14 tackles on the day, got in there and got that from his free safety position. Another look here against the, uh, against the option. This time again, you can see us pinching the ends and forcing the ball to bounce outside. Tom Szymanski, number 51, fits real well outside that end. And you know, one of the things I liked about this clip is all the white jerseys around the ball. Uh, both teams went a lot of no huddle, a lot of up tempo. It was a hard game on both sides, and our guys, I thought, played with tremendous effort throughout the game.
Here's another turnover where we're bringing the linebackers up the middle and getting a fumble. Okay, this is, again, we were talking about defensively trying to give them some different looks. In this play right here, we're going to pinch our field end, and we're trying to make the quarterback keep the ball. One of the things we wanted to try to do is get him to go sideways in this game and not, and not hurt us downhill with the dive. And in this play, we were able to fit correctly. We pinched. We made him keep the ball. Our linebacker played over the top on the quarterback, and our safety, Casey Tanner, was able to run down the pitch. So a well-defended play against the option here. Similar type play here, just from a different angle. This is Evan Bunker scored three touchdowns on the day, and this is one of them with Ben Crick as his lead back. Actually, this play is blocked so well from Matt Porter and Jake Golden that Ben Crick doesn't have to block anybody, uh, and Evan's able, able to take it in the end zone. This touchdown put us up two scores here. Coach, after graduating through your starter, Ryan Burgess, there was a lot of questions going in about your quarterback situation. Uh, Sonny Puzo, the freshman, he started, but Henry Foy at the end sort of came in, I think, midway through the third quarter yeah. and had that big touchdown pass in the fourth quarter to Chris Ragone. Why would you make that switch? What did you see out of Sunday's game? And, and more importantly, what did you like out of Henry? Well, it was, uh, we're actually in a great situation right now because we have a couple quarterbacks we think we can win with. And be, the funny thing is, beyond that, I think we have our third and fourth and fifth quarterbacks we can win with. So we have maybe more depth than we've ever had at the position. You know, Sonny got the start in that game because he deserved to get the start through the preseason. He just was our most consistent quarterback. Uh, and we just decided that at that point, as we got that point in the third quarter, that we were kind of stagnant on offense. We needed a spark, and it wasn't necessarily Sonny's fault, um, but we brought Henry in, and to Henry's credit, from the day we made the decision that Sonny was going to be the starter, he kept his head up, had a tremendous attitude, practiced hard, worked hard, and he got an opportunity in that game, and he took advantage of it and did a great job for us. Do you expect Sonny to play a lot this week, or you just do you think you're going to stick with Henry if you align? Yeah, you know it's a it's a tough uh, it's a tough question actually. I think we're going to kind of go forward with playing them both right now and uh, practicing them both and trying to make game time decisions as best we can. Uh, I think they both have tremendous ability. I think both of them can lead our team. Both of them have some different qualities. Um, so we're kind of just going. It's hard. You, you always want to say you don't want to be a two quarterback team, but I think both of them deserve the opportunity to continue to get reps with the ones and we'll just make game day decisions as we go. All right, so Harry, to show you some of the clips from this week that I thought, just to give the fans that weren't there a, a chance to see, this first one, this is the freshman quarterback, Sonny Puzo, getting his first start, and he just gives us the ability, he's got great arm strength, good athletic ability, gives us the ability to run some of those, uh, those read type plays, which were, you know... So this play right here, you can see that we're get, we've got Bunker coming right downhill with Crick in the backfield and Budness. So our three running backs are all in the backfield. And Puzo is able to read the end. If the end doesn't squeeze, we're going to give the ball to Bunker. And if the end does squeeze, Puzo has the ability to keep the ball with Crick as a lead blocker. So this was early in the game here, trying to get his feet wet a little bit. And this is some of the dynamic ability that we have with him back there in the backfield. This is back to the offense here. Uh, we're down 14-7, driving on our second drive. This is uh, the Puzo rolling out. I just thought the, the uh, alums might want to see this as a little glimpse of the future here with our freshman quarterback and freshman receiver, Darian Myers, uh, running a, a comeback route here that, that Sonny hits on the run. Pretty good throw and catch from two, two uh, young guys on the team. Now, one of the things that we, we did do, I know Harry uh, mentioned this before, we did switch quarterbacks. And, uh, you know, Sonny Puzo had done a great job for us in the preseason and, and, and deserved to get the start. We were a little stagnant, though, as we got into that third quarter. We weren't doing much offensively. Um, not always necessarily the quarterback's fault, but we had the luxury of having another quarterback who we think we can win with right now. And, we made the switch to Henry Foy, and he kind of sparked the offense. Uh, and one of the things that Henry does very, very well is, is if, if a team's going to just stack the box against us, he, he can really throw the ball. He makes good decisions. This was a big touchdown here. He throws to Chris Ragone. As you can see, this Bates did this a lot to us in this game, which I don't blame him. I'd probably do the same thing. They've got everybody in the box. They've got their safety at nine yards. 
Uh, their safety is a good player. He had a lot of tackles around the line of scrimmage in this game. And when we got Henry in, we were able to do some things like double move in the corner here and throw in a touchdown to Chris Ragone. Well, well designed play by our offensive staff and then well executed by Henry and Chris. This play, you're going to, it's another, another uh, throw from Henry that we were able to get out of him that unfortunately the wide cop, copy of the film was cut. Uh, but you can kind of see this at the end here. One of the things when you're running the ball as well as we were, you can see the defense crashing their ends, playing their linebackers downhill. And if they're going to do that, you've got to be able to execute the, the play action pass. And right here, we, we set it up real well. And you can see this at the end. You can't see as well from the end zone copy. This ball is thrown in perfectly to Ian Duggar, our sophomore receiver. Henry got this over the top of the linebacker and underneath the corner. And that was, it was just, Henry did a great job coming in, cold off the bench there in the third quarter. Uh, made some big passes to kind of loosen up the defense a little bit, which we needed. Coach, everybody knows about Evan Bunker in the backfield, preseason All-American. He's been your starter for basically the last three years. Ben Crick has had some injuries, has struggled a little bit. You seem to get him in the game in terms of snaps a lot more against Bates this past weekend, but maybe not as many touches as you'd like, or or you like that situation where it is right now? Well, I think it's going to be something where we're, we're utilizing Ben in a lot of different ways. And, and one of the things I'll show you, Harry, when we get to the clips here is the thing about Ben and Evan is they're not just running backs. And you're going to see some of the clips. I mean, they, they're both in the backfield. We're running the same play, uh, an outside zone play, to both sides. They're both – one of them is taking the ball, one of them is blocking. And we had great success with that play, with both of them carrying the ball. So um, we did try to get Ben the ball out a little bit on the perimeter as a receiver a couple times. Uh, we missed him a couple. We overthrew him a couple times, and and uh, one ball got batted down. So there were some plays where he was the primary receiver that didn't work out for us, and we'll continue to do those things. Is his speed the thing that makes him such a threat? I mean, Evan is such a grounding, pounding runner, and it seems as Ben can do that a little bit as well. But his speed is just well. There's just, no there's no question. Ben's got a different gear. And Ben is, uh, he, he's, he, when he cuts, he's got a, he's just different when, when he cuts. And, uh, you know, we, we had actually never really used him as a receiver uh, before. He's, he's very good at, at catching the ball and running routes. And um, he's just, he just like, he's just like Evan. They're all around good football players. This next clip here, okay, again, we're going to get Crick around the edge. Same play we saw before with the young tackle, Dave Brzezowski, reach blocking. And here comes Evan Bunker, who, had, who led us with 123 yards rushing on the day, gets a nice kickout block. And Crick's able to take it between the reach and the kickout. And that's where his speed is just different than most people, is he can really get it down the field once he, once he gets that seam. Big game for us there. Okay, this is one of Evan's uh, big plays. We're running our, our power. Uh, and we've got Mike Budness as a lead back. Mike did a great job in this game playing a traditional fullback type role, which usually does a lot of things for us, but in this game he really played a lot of traditional fullback. And we get a double team at the point of attack, and Budness as a kickout block, and Bunker does a nice job leading and following his fullback here. We've got Bunker lined up here and Crick with Puzo at the quarterback position. So basically three guys that can run the ball. But the thing we talk about all the time with Bunker and Crick is they're not just running backs. On this play, we're going to run an outside run with Crick, and Bunker is going to be the lead blocker. And we get a real good reach block. We've got a freshman tackle right here, uh, Dave Brzezowski, starting his first game, and he does a great job of reaching. Connor Flynn, our, our left guard junior, first game starting as well. On the front side, these two guys do a real good job of reach blocking uh, on this play. And you can see that Evan Bunker's taking the edge and Crick's down the sideline. Coach, Trinity versus Williams, not just in football, but across pretty much all of the NESCAC sports, is always a big rivalry. But for this game, it's always one of the biggest games on the calendar. I mean, alums come out from, I mean, seemingly from everywhere yeah. from both schools. Uh, you know, NESCAC championships have been decided on this game. What does this game mean to you as a coach, but also to your players? Well, there's a lot of tradition to the game, so it's fun to play. I mean, when, as a football player and as a competitor, you want to play in games that matter. And over the last 20, 30 years, the Trinity-Williams game has mattered. 
Um, it's really decided the league champion the majority of the years. And there have been some unbelievable games. You go back to the 91 game that I played in that Sports Illustrated called the game of the decade. Uh, you go back to the game that we had a few years ago here where we went to four overtimes. There have been, in the last 20 years, there's probably been four games where somebody recovered an onside kick and won the game. Sometimes it was Trinity, sometimes it was Williams. So it just, you go back to last year, we couldn't score. And then we scored two touchdowns in the last six minutes and win the game. The game just never, it's never over, you know. So it's a special rivalry to play, and it's one of those games that you, you want, we want every game to have that kind of meaning and that kind of, you know, that kind of excitement. And uh, I know our guys are looking forward to playing. Is it any different having this game week two as opposed to week seven or maybe even week eight? I definitely think that there have been years where one of the teams, whether it be us or Wet Williams, has had a distinct advantage because they're playing with an experienced quarterback. Uh, you know, when, when uh, Eric McGrath was a senior, I thought we had a huge advantage. When they had Pat Moffitt as a senior, they had a big advantage. If, we're, if it's a year where it's week two and – one team's quarterback is having his second start and the other team's quarterback has started for three years, That I think that does help that team. But but some years, you know, both teams are in the same boat at the quarterback position and it's not a big difference. Coach, as you mentioned earlier, Williams seemingly always a contender for the NESCAC title. A little bit of a surprising loss last week against Colby, yeah. but and like you said, they're always a tough game, especially, you know, especially on Jesse Miller Field. But what do they do that makes them difficult to play against? Well, they have talent. I mean, that's what makes them difficult. They have talent on both sides of the ball. They always have big kids that can run. They're going to line up with receivers that are 6'3", 6 6'5", 6 that can run down the field. Uh, they've got guys in the second level on defense that run better than most teams in this league. Um, you know, I think people are shocked about what happened last week, but the first game for them, they throw four interceptions. One of them's returned 98 yards for a touchdown. They snapped the ball over their punter's head. They had some first game things happen that, that went against them. That being said, a Colby, you know, Colby's a good-looking team, um, but you know, I think our guys understand that 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 score last week it might not be indicative of, of how good Williams really could be. Forty-seven home wins on Jesse Miller Field. Twelve years you guys haven't lost. It's a streak that nobody in the country can match. What does keeping this streak alive mean to you and your team? Well, it's hard to talk about the streak, Harry, during the season because the streak doesn't mean anything. This, this year's team hasn't even played a home game, you know? So it, it means something on the overall grand scheme of things, and it's important to our players to not be the guys that lose the streak more than anything. But we don't talk about the streak as coaches. We don't say we need to win this game because of the streak. I mean, we're so focused on trying to get this team to reach its potential to win the NESCAC championship that the streak isn't part of it it's the streak is something that when the season's over you go wow that's pretty cool that we have that streak but in season it's not something we talk about at all now that being said when we play at home I do think we've gotten some funky bounces you know and there we, we get some 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 luck that I think is you, you make your own luck you know but I think our players believe that they're not going to lose at home and they also have a fear of being the ones that blow the streak so there's a little added incentive I think to how we play and sometimes that shows up in the fourth quarter of tight games where our guys just kind of push it through. Ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining us. We'll be back next week as we preview the Hamilton game on Jesse Miller Field.